Well, hello there, folks. It's Sigo Starcraft back, bringing you a game between Barcode, the Zerg player in the top left, and Snuck, Protoss player in the bottom right. Now, this guy actually casted a game of his a little while ago. We played up against Idra. Very nice, well-mannered guy. Uh, he didn't win that game, which is part of the reason why I'm actually really appreciated. He got in touch with me and offered to send me out some other replays to take a look at. Uh, be generally because I was casting that game for Idra and. I know sometimes it's hard to watch your losses and, and feel good about that. But he is a Master League Protoss. He actually is from Romania, believe it or not. Tracked me down through my YouTube account. And he's playing up against a Grand Master Level Zerg up here in the top. And it's not too often I'm casting ladder games at this kind of high pinnacle of play. It's usually, you know, pro players, big names. But the people that just kind of grind it out on the ladder here, I'm always interested to watch their games because it's not necessarily doing this to grab a bunch of cash. It's just to have a lot of fun, but at the most elite level, where I would be if I actually had a little bit more time to put in StarCraft and I actually had talent. Maybe that'll happen someday. It looks like it's going to be a Forge Expand. Yes, it is. And this might run into a Cannon Rush. I know that the last game I watched was Snuck. It looks like X Snack. That's the way I thought it was pronounced, but he told me that it's kind of pronounced Snook in English. I'm perfectly fine with that. We'll see if he does go for the cannon. This Overlord will be able to spot it if that is the case, but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be able to stop that cannon from happening. Or he might just go standard. Either way, wouldn't surprise me. Overlord won't see the forge in time. And right now, we can see the supply of the Zerg player is just when this should be coming down to make a hatch. Nice hit plant. That's a nice plant. It's really interesting to watch, you know, pro Zerg players do the juke with probes. For me, I just throw down the pylon and run away. Right? There's, it delays the hatch for so long, and it's something I can actually perform. Whereas when you see a lot of Zerg players now are ballsy enough that they will get down the hatchery with the pro bouncing around, just being able to sneak it in there. So, right on. Cannon in place, extra pylon down. Overlord sees everything that's going on, nothing to worry about, because there's not even a gateway started yet. And there it is. Knowing me, I probably would have went for that cannon rush anyways. It's harder to cannon rush on this map, there's not as tight of chokes to, you know, carry your cannon or your pylons from being too well surrounded by zerglings. And it will be a really, really fast third base. And you see very good diligence here out of Barcode. I should give him a name. This guy's name for this replay is Becky. Becky is doing a really good job with those Zerglings. And is going to run around everywhere. I picture Becky as a college student with a bit of a hipster name from hipster parents. Just going out there, playing some high-level StarCraft on the weekends. Maybe he's got a girlfriend he kind of sees on and off, but nothing too too hardcore about that because she doesn't really understand his need to play StarCraft at an elite level and how much joy that can bring as he diligently scouts for pylons. And so Becky's in a good spot. Overlord took a few shots from the cannon, but Becky's going to be able to get that out of there in time. Good saturation, nothing but probes, no worry. For me, when I'm in this spot, I'm always worried that, oh, they're going to make like six roaches and come across the map, and then I'm just going to lose. Eh. Particularly, oh, he did spot this third hatch, which is very important. That is what allows him to say, I'm just going to macro up, as opposed to worry about roaches coming. And the Stargate. Very good safe opening. Get out Phoenixes to scout. That probe's really well hidden, actually. I didn't even notice it was there. It's a great spot for it. We'll see if he's got some two base intentions or not. One Zealot, just pushing around. Might actually see this probe. Is he going to be able to... Oh, almost. That would have been really cute. Now, this might throw him into making a lot of extra units. Seeing that probe and the extra... And the extra... Uh, couple of Zealots out on the map. I mean, Warp Gate's... Not even near finished right now. So I think this is just a bit of a fake out. Which I'm surprised. Usually, you'll do this with a Mothership Core or something. Try to get this around on the queen. Pretty tough to do. He's going to have to get those zealots into a good spot. Not any micro on any of those uh, zealots there. Sorry, the zerglings. A little surprising. 
Oh, wow. Almost loses that queen. Is he going to go for the queen? No. Did it? All right, job. Killed a lot of zerglings. Forced some zerglings. A couple more queens on the way and a roach war now. So it's, it's hard to say if it's super worth it. Forced a few more links than maybe Becky wanted to make at this point in time. It is phoenixes that are here. No, it's an oracle out first. And if there's not a second queen down here, well, this poor crawler is in place. There was scouted. Picking off that queen would be very worthwhile. Let's see if he can get it. Take an extra couple of shots. We I mean, will keep it alive. So fairly solid play. That was nice to pick off that queen. A couple drones. Zerg does have the watchtowers. And looks like we might have a really fast third base. And this is something you can do quite well as a Protoss player once you have this good economy going. And you have starports in place. Because if a bunch of Zerglings come in here, your Oracle can cut through those really fast. Phoenixes can pick up some roaches. It's very hard as a Zerg player to come and put pressure on this kind of play. When there is, uh, you know, air control by the, Z the Protoss player. Now the lair is almost finished up, so we're going to see if Becky wants to go into Spire play. Sometimes it works out. doesn't have a huge bank of gas yet, but it could by the time it's ready to move into this. It has taken six extractors. I've heard when I watch some pro commentary that without having eight extractors, it's almost not worthwhile to try to go for Muta's as a Zerg player against Protoss, particularly with the Stargate up, just because of how difficult it is. And it is going to be Hydras with Infestation Pit. I don't know if we're going to see a really fast Hive and some Swarm Hosts. Be nice. The and By that I mean you can be able to use the Infestation Pit to get this up to Hive Tech or be able to get the Swarm Hosts out. It's getting a lot of damage in on that. That's kind of funny. As though it mattered. That was just cute. If there was another air unit there, maybe it would have made a difference. And we can see the units-wise for the Protoss player. I mean, they've, he's got some Zealots out now, but there's none of these players, and it's at the 10-minute mark, essentially have any army at all. That's just the way it goes. That's macro-focused opening for you. Creep spread isn't amazing, particularly if he wants to go Roach Hydra. I would expect his creep spread to be doing a lot better. Just because it's, his mobility is going to be very, very important to him. Now, canceling this fourth base could be pretty vital. We'll see if he can get there in time. There's a lot of Hydras starting to move across the map. Zealots will carve through those pretty good, particularly with plus one. He's got to be very careful about these Void Rays. They will get mowed down really quickly. Now the Zelts are going to drive back the Hydras. What he really wants to get out of this is the Hatchery here. Nice play with the Oracle. A lot of extra kills. And he actually gets it. That was turned out really, really well. That was a nice little timing there from Snuck. Up to 12 workers killed. And gets the 4th base cancel. As he's moving up into his position here. Now he doesn't really have any area of effect ready. And a lot of Chrono Boost here, surprisingly. After seeing all these Hydras, I would have really expected to have seen... Ugh. Oh no. Nice. That was a very clutch time warp there. I'd expect him to start throwing down the Robo Bay or something. At least uh, Twilight Council to get charged. There it is. Does he, ha he does have charge. That makes sense. Like He must have charge if he's going to go Zealots against Hydralisks. Zealots do great against Hydralisks off creep. If you can get up on top of them, of course. They're very StarCraft 1-esque. Remember when, like, Zealots had Zealot leg charge and just could blow through things really quickly? This is nice, just to make sure that there's no extra bases going down anywhere. Smart plays, got some extra money. Get that stuff in place. It's going for... Where's the second star board? There it is. Storm, Void Ray, Zealot. This is a nice composition, actually. I'm a huge fan of this composition. I mean, the gas is a pretty limiting factor here. 
He's got to try and do a lot. Void Ray is very expensive on the gas. Was it 250? 150. And I think it's 200 then for the High Templars. 150. God, I suck. But 150 each is pretty tough. And I think you get about 100 gas a minute per extractor. He is going to go after this base again. Storm is finished. Lots of zealots. Void Ray's in place. He is getting the plus one weapons upgrade for that. I'm trying to get the High Templars. There they are. He's only got four High Templars in here. So it's not a lot. But these Hydras, the only 1-1, one, one, could get mowed down pretty quick. Good Storm. That Storm kind of whiffed. I like the Fungal there. That's, that's pretty good Storms. This just seems to be a lot of numbers here, though. These Zealots got worked through pretty quickly. Void Rays are obviously very good. Just as a rule of thumb. But I think he is going to lose these finally. Ooh. He has what to say. It would be nice to get that. Ah. That could be a fun snipe. What is his upgrades at? Plus two attack? That's a nice snipe on the hatch. I might have tried to go for a few drones first. But we can see the timing with the Hydras coming back. That it might have been more effective for him to actually go for this. Those helots did a pretty good job there. Another base going down. He didn't kill this one, but it's not producing much right now, economy-wise. Supplies aren't too extreme. I mean, we're at the 16-minute mark. You'd, you'd want a little bit better, but... I don't know if he's going to have what it takes to stop this push here. Bit of a bank in, in minerals here from the pro from the Zerg player. I'm pretty sure this base is going to be forfeit. I mean, he's got some storms here. He might be able to land them good from the high ground. Let's see if he's paying attention, otherwise this will be very painful for him. Nice split up of the Hydralisks there. These Zealots are getting toasted super, super quickly. That was a nice storm, another good storm. Zerglings coming through in desperation. A little bit of a run by there. Zerg player is going to have to pull back, but you see the supplies really aren't that great for either player right now. The Zealots going super to town. Still getting those upgrades moving along. And he doesn't have great upgrades. Plus three attacks, pretty nice. For a Zealot charge, pretty nice. He's going to push up this way, but his army's so fragile. He's got... What's his unit count at? Eh, not that much in probes. Like, maybe he's got like 90 supply and probes or something. That might be part of it. He's going to intercept this army a bit. He's going to have to attack. Nope. Actually, we'll pull back to some safety here. Doesn't have any storms ready, though. Ooh, more Archons. Archons are pretty. Stabilizing. And this is an interesting position. I, with the upgrades, I thought it might be really nice for the Zerg player to go into something like Swarm Host. But there's a lot of mobility to this Protoss army. Oh, man. Oh, Stormage. Fall back. Say, so you don't get too far into that creep there. Those Hydras get a lot of speed over there. Another little bit of zealot pressure. I think that's really smart for him. Getting the kills he can. These zerglings are obviously... Well, they're plus two armor, but they've got no attack upgrades. So they're getting a little chewed up. So the good thing for the Protoss player, he's been able to keep himself pretty much even on economy. with the, with, Which is great against a zerg player as a Protoss player. And I think that's a great part of this expansion confident Protoss. And I'm not one of those people to debate whether something is overpowered or not, but I think that Protoss is, is the better race right now because of the opportunity to do this. But that doesn't mean everybody executes it the best. You know, simply saying, well, finally he's getting up more static defenses here. 3-1, plus 2 is on the way. Getting the Queen would be pretty good too.
That's a pretty good sized army. This is a great position for the Zerg player. Nice storms though. The fungals aren't really that important. I don't think there's that much of a, a Protoss army here to really worry about the fungals. Oh, Becky. Becky's losing tons. These Archons are just too beefy. Too beefy. And just go home. You did the damage you needed to. You lost a lot of your stuff. You got a good economy. Just head home. Maybe come up here and check for the space in a bit, but... No worries. Getting a little bit of a bank up there, which is a little surprising. What is this, three Void Rays at a time? You know, why not? Void Rays are awesome. We'll come up here to deny this base again. Perfectly fine. It's, what really matters now is if he's got any storms. Lots of our Templars could get some feedbacks on these here. Wants to keep those Archons alive. And he will. More Void Rays in play. Plus 1-1 one, one is going to be finished here pretty quick. I'm surprised you wouldn't go just for the attack. I mean, Voidways are there to deal the damage, not really about being tanky. It's almost maxed out. It doesn't seem like there's that much of an army here. Well, I guess there is now that I highlight everything. Oh, there's a little bit more. Cannon's in position to deal with some minor runbys. And he might actually be going for Colossus now that he has a Robo down. This is a pretty sad spot for a Protoss player, though. There isn't too much you can really hope to accomplish. Ooh, one-shotting them. 47 versus Biological. Two-shot any of those Hydras. Cool. So the Zerg player is moving along. I mean, unfortunately, he never got himself the economy to get up to Hive Tech to get that 3-3 going. Because he's going up against a plus three attack. But this isn't a great position for the Protoss to attack into. This is the most ideal Zerg position to attack into right here. Using C, that Snuck here has lost a lot of supply in this attack. That was a really bad concave, a really bad situation to fight into. Lost a lot of stuff there. And essentially evens up the supply. And I mean, it's in favor of the Protoss. This base might actually get up, which would be sickening. Uh, but that was just a really poor engagement point there. It's so open in this spot in the middle, right? The Zerg could build a concave around everything. And the storm area is so much smaller that it doesn't really do you much good. I like the DTs mixed in. There isn't any detection moving with his army. That one Void Ray is going to have a bad day. It's nice that as a Protoss player, Zealots are essentially always good. In the late game, it's so easy to afford those. Well, that didn't turn out super well, unfortunately. Supplies are still pretty evened up. There is detection in these bases here. A little bit of an oversaturation happening, but there's not much you can do about it. So we see more fungals, more hydras. This base, for like the 18th time, is trying to go up. So as the DT didn't work his way in here, I might be able to snipe that before everything else happened. Now, the Protoss army is really out of position to deal with this. He's behind in supply. He's working really hard to get it back up. It looks like he wants to go into Colossus, but I don't think it's necessary. I think he's done very good with his Storm and Archon mix. Oh, don't lose the probes. There is now one Observer in here. He's going to lose... Oh, not quite. Bit of an interesting spot. A little bit of a delicate spot here. Lots of Storms available. So this... Zerg army is just going to be very careful about its positioning now and not just getting raffle stomped by the storms. Could be using a little bit of this chrono boost on some of the upgrades. It's nice to get those done and out of the way. Pretty much just onto shields now, anyways. This base is now finished. I mean, the Protoss probably is going to want to go after that pretty soon. It's surprising, though, with having essentially, well, these bases are mined out. But being on almost on three bases here, that he's having trouble maxing out again. The Zerg finally gone up to Hive. It has not. Still very surprising to me. 
It's a pretty sick army, but once again, the positioning here for the Zerg player is really good. Well, this is really interesting. There's not many Hydras left. These Void Rays might be able to take it, but these Queens would help out a lot in this position. This base is about to go up. Void Rays still in tow. Maybe Snuck feels a little bit more desperate about this position than he needs to. The Zealots are getting on top of the army here. It's dealing a lot of damage. Very well played. Feedbacks on the Queens. That's kind of cool. A couple Zealots going to town in the worker line. The Zealots are coming in at least. Otherwise these waterways might have got shredded up. Wow. Lots of kills. And Becky leaves the game. That's a really smart game by Snuck there. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Shows a really high level Protoss style play. Heavy economy. And though he got out Colossus' tech eventually, I'm glad he didn't go into Colossus because I don't think that was the composition that was going to save him. You can get overrun with that very quickly. So I'm actually pretty happy with the way he played that out. Single Starcraft Grandmaster game. Thanks very much, very much to Snuck for sending that in. And we'll talk with you guys in a little while.